Let's get started. We have two services on Sunday morning, the first of which is the prophecy update. And uh, second service is actually the sermon. And currently it's a verse by verse study through the book of James. Uh, today we're going to look at what I'll call pre-rapture prepping. Pre-rapture prepping. Not what you're thinking. It's not physical prepping, <laughs> but related to the exhortations in James that speak to spiritual preparations, especially in these last days before the seven year tribulation. By the way, spoiler alert, the prophecy update today is also about the rapture. Uh, just so happens to be my favorite thing to talk about, if you couldn't tell. So. Uh, now, we did have some problems uh, with our Facebook live stream. So uh, I don't know that we have Facebook. We don't, right? So sorry about that. Of course, you're not on Facebook, so you're not hearing that. So if you're on YouTube, we would encourage you to go directly to our website for the uncensored and uninterrupted entirety of today's update. So. For today's update, I want to answer a question. And the question is this, just how close are we really <laughs> to the pre-tribulation rapture of the Church of Jesus Christ? Spent a lot of time this last week just really seeking the Lord about the update today. And it's my hope, it's my prayer that what I share will be of great encouragement to believers, especially those who find themselves very discouraged, especially with everything that is happening in the world today. By the way, uh, I hope you know, for those of you that are discouraged, you're in very good company. There are many men and women mightily used of God in the Scriptures that were very discouraged, very downcast. But God was always there, always lifted them up, always provided for them, always strengthened them, always encouraged them. Please don't let the enemy lie to you or try to convince you or deceive you to believe that because you're discouraged or downcast that it's a sign of a lack of faith. Don't let the enemy do that. If you're discouraged, you're in good company. And this update is for you. If you're not, I want to say this as lovingly and graciously as I can, this update's not for you. If you're at the top of your game, everything's going smashingly well. Well, you might want to just save the link and archive the video. <laughs> the Lord tarries. You'll, you'll need this one day. But I really do want to speak to those who find themselves discouraged and downcast. Because after all, isn't the rapture our not only blessed hope, but only hope, keyword hope? So I hope it'll be a, an encouragement to you. But I also hope and pray that it will serve as a warning to unbelievers, an encouragement for believers, but a warning to unbelievers. I want to begin with two prophecies in the Bible that speak to this sudden event that we affectionately refer to as the rapture. And the first one, well known, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, I'll begin reading in verse 13. By the way, this was the Apostle Paul's first letter that he wrote, and it's the first time that he mentions the gospel, as we're about to see. And it's in the context of the rapture, which is the gospel, the good news. 
So he writes, verse 13, but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's the gospel, the good news, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this, verse 15, we declare to you by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. This is their bodily resurrection. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Are you encouraged by this? I am. <laughs> I'll take it a step further and say, and I hope you don't tire of me saying this, but I truly do not know, and this is not hyperbole, I truly do not know what I would do were it not for this hope that I have, that at any time that trumpet is going to sound, and the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and we who were alive at that time which can be at any time, are going to be caught up, raptured up, to meet the Lord in the air. We're also going to see them again in the air. They get their new glorified bodies first, then we get our glorified bodies. That alone, by the way, is, <laughs> please Lord Jesus, come quickly. <laughs> in fact, that's what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 and 52. He says, By the Spirit, behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, speaking of death, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Not the blink of an eye, the twinkling of an eye. It is so fast. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we who are alive and remain will be metamorphosized, changed, transformed. We put off these bodies, these temporal bodies, these corruptible, corrupted fleshly bodies, we put them off and we are given our new glorified bodies in the twinkling of an eye. And then we are caught up with great force and great speed to meet the Lord in the air. This is the rapture of the church. And it has to happen before the seven year tribulation. I suppose this is as good of a time as any to mention that we have devoted an entire update to the proving of the pre-tribulation rapture. Let me say that again. Pre-tribulation rapture proof. It's not the pre-trib theory. It's even hard to say that. I'm sorry if I spit on you guys in the front row. We're getting the baptism started early, I guess, maybe. <laughs> it is the sound doctrine of the pre-tribulation rapture. And we've provided, you can find it on the website, a link to this update, 
which will also have a downloadable 21-page PDF file of the notes, typology, and transcript. I want to mention one thing before we move on. In 1 Thessalonians 4, which we just read, and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, which we just read, there's the sound of a trumpet. And Paul delineates it in his epistle to the Corinthians, and he says it's the last trumpet. Now to the Thessalonians, he says it's the trumpet call of God. Now why do I point that out? And why is that important? Because there are two trumpets. There's the first trumpet for Israel, and the last trumpet for the church. There's the trumpet of angels, that's for Israel. And there's the trumpet of God, that's for the church. Please, please, please make that distinction. Because if you kind of mess up and blur that line and don't make that distinction between Israel and the church, then no wonder. Especially if you're given over to this demonic doctrine, and that's biblical doctrines of demons, this demonic doctrine that teaches that the church has replaced Israel as God's elect, that God is through with the Jew. That's demonic. That's a doctrine of demons. <laughs> and, and, and if the church has replaced, it, it's even hard again to speak this. But if the church has replaced Israel as God's people, then no wonder you've got to put the church into the tribulation. Because that's the purpose of the tribulation, is for the salvation of the Jewish nation. And if the church is Israel, then guess what? We have to go through the tribulation then. It's the, it's the time of Jacob's trouble. You know who Jacob is, a.k.a. Israel. I had no intention of going this far, but too late. As they say, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. So we've got toothpaste all over the place now. God has a covenant with the Jew. It's an everlasting covenant. God is not through with the Jew. God has a plan for the Jewish people. The church is not Israel. Jacob is Israel. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, not the time of the church's trouble. We're not in trouble. <laughs> We're saved. What would be the purpose of having the church go through the seven-year tribulation? What does that accomplish? What purpose does that serve? It serves no purpose whatsoever. See, when the church age is complete, then the Lord takes His bride out of this world and shifts the entirety of His attention and focus to His people Israel, and the covenant He has with Israel. That's the whole purpose of the 70th week of Daniel. It's that final seven year period of time that we refer to as the seven year tribulation. And it marks the last seven years of human history as we know it. And at the end of the seven year tribulation is the second coming of Christ. And by the way, <laughs> The Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, if you notice when we were reading in 1 Thessalonians, says, we're going to come back with Him as His bride by His side, as one so aptly said it. At the rapture, Jesus comes for us. At the second coming, Jesus comes with us. And it's separated by this period of seven years. So I suppose you could say that the next event on God's prophetic clock is the rapture of the church. And you'll forgive me 
but nobody's talking about it. It should be the number one thing that pastors should be talking about, because it can happen at any time. And people need to know about it, if for no other reason, so that they can have the hope that we have. Because you see, knowing that that trumpet can sound and the rapture can happen at any time, well, that's what gets me through the day. Because it could be today. And if it weren't for that, I don't know how I would make it through the day. I'm reluctant to say it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. I, again, it's not hyperbole. I would literally go insane. I would go out of my mind if I did not have this hope that I'm going to be taken out of this world in this event known as the rapture of the church. And I'll tell you, as things get harder and harder, and they're getting harder and harder, and the world is waxing more and more evil, and the world is waxing more and more evil, the rapture of the church and the nearness and the closeness of the rapture of the church should be at the forefront of every Christian's mind and heart. Because when you know you have that to look forward to, it makes whatever you're going through easier to get through. And you can hold on and hang on. Keep your hands to the plow, your eyes on the prize, your mind stayed on Him. Well, this brings me to the aforementioned question of just how close are we really? <laughs> you ready for the answer? I think you already know the answer. It is closer than any of us can possibly even begin to imagine. Oh, come on, Pastor. You say that every week. I know. And I'm going to keep saying it every week. You know why? Because it is. What do you mean? We are so close. We are so close to the rapture of the church. And I hope whatever trial you're going through, whatever difficulty you're in, whatever set of circumstances that you're experiencing, that knowing this sound doctrine and truth and having this hope will strengthen you in the Lord. Knowing that it's so close. How do you know it's so close? Well, <laughs> thankfully, the Bible, imagine the Bible, is replete with numerous and even voluminous prophecies that paint this picture on the canvas of what the world will look like at the time of the end. Let me say it like this. God wants us to know. He does not want us to be ignorant. He wants us to know so that we're not caught unaware, caught off guard. Even as Paul would write, I don't even need to write to you. Peter would echo the same thing. We're going to talk a little bit about this in second service. I don't really need to write to you about this, because for you it's not going to be as a thief in the night. Why? Because you're expecting it. You're watching for it. It will not catch you off guard. You're awake, you're sober, you're alert, you're ready. God wants us to be ready. He wants us to be informed. He does not want us to be ignorant concerning Bible prophecy and the time of the end. And it is the time of the end. 
One need look no further than to what's happening in the world today and connect those prophetic dots. You don't have to be super intelligent. I mean, mercy, look at your pastor for crying out loud. Just connect the dots. I want to share three prophecies with you, if you'll kindly allow me to. But uh, let's go ahead <laughs> and end the whatever we're on live stream. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know if we're even on that anymore. It's getting so bad. My goodness, we, 